Now that you are familiar with the basic options of the control unit's view from working through the previous chapter, let's turn in this chapter to the functions view of Eccentry Diagnostics. The start screen shows a list of the main function groups for the identified vehicle, which in this case is the Model Series 204. Double-clicking on an entry or clicking on the plus symbol in front of a main function group will open the corresponding subgroups. Now search for and highlight the function Electric Seat Adjustment Driver. Once you have highlighted the function you want, you can open the function overview by double-clicking on the function or clicking on the continue button. This overview will show all the components involved in the function. Alternatively, you can also start a function-related quick test. Which route you take depends on the case in question. If it is a matter of a straightforward complaint where the characteristics of the fault are clear, the respective function can be opened directly. If the symptoms are unclear, however, it's worth performing a quick test first in order to narrow down the faults. In many cases, it is worthwhile starting the diagnosis operation with a quick test. Hover Go by clicking on the Start Quick Test button. As in the control units view, all the control units installed in a vehicle are checked. However, unlike in the control units view, the fault codes determined by Eccentric Diagnostics are not assigned to the control units, but to the appropriate functions. After completion of the quick test, the results are displayed with the aid of the familiar symbols. You already are familiar with the Start Quick Test, Show Initial Quick Test, and erase fault memory buttons from the control unit's view. A new feature here is the button for filtering fault codes that have not been checked. Clicking on the button will display only those functions where it has not yet been possible to confirm rectification of a fault due to test prerequisites missing. The function Electric Seat Adjustment Driver shows the symbol for non-tested fault codes. Select the function by double-clicking on it. The function overview is now displayed for the selected function. The components are shown on the right-hand side, together with the data flow. On the left is the key for the components involved in the function. Below is a description of the data flow, namely which data made available by which component in which sequence. The associated WIS function description or TIPS results can be opened from the function overview. It is also possible to switch to expert mode. This will be described separately in the next chapter. What happens when you click on the Continue button from the Function Overview? Find out by clicking on it. You will automatically go to the Guided Troubleshooting function. If the function enables you to select symptoms, the Symptom Selection screen will be displayed here first. Please note that the selected symptoms will influence the scope and sequence of the subsequent test. If you do not click on any symptoms, the maximum number of tests will be shown. Here, for example, two symptoms are already highlighted. The list of tests to be carried out is retrieved via the Continue button. Try it out. The following overview lists the tests to be carried out in order of importance from the top down. This sequence is compiled by Eccentric Diagnostics as a function of 
the fault codes of the selected function, the selected symptoms, and an integral evaluation logic. Consequently, the first test step shown is very likely to be the test that will be able to eliminate the complaint. Accordingly, the tests are to be performed in the specified sequence from the top down. If a highlighted test step is opened by double-clicking on it or by clicking on the Continue button, you will be taken to the actual guided troubleshooting function. The component to be tested is actuated by means of special buttons. If you click on the Yes button, in response to the question in the left-hand window, you will be taken to the next test step. Or, if you have reached the end of the test, you will be returned to the list of tests to be carried out. If you give a negative answer to the question by clicking on the No button, you will be taken to further test steps, depending on the component being tested. Clicking on the Information button will give you information on installation location, pin assignment, circuit diagrams, etc. The button is therefore the same as the tab of the same name in the Control Units view. Tests that have been carried out can be marked with various different status symbols. A tick indicates that the results of the test were positive. In other words, that it was possible to carry out the test step in full. A cross indicates that the test could not be carried out correctly or could not be carried out in full. What results of the quick test are shown in the functions view? Click on the correct answer, then confirm by clicking on OK. Here's the correct answer. In the functions view, the quick test results display the fault codes of the selected function. Which factors influence the scope and sequence of the tests to be carried out in? Here's the correct answer. The scope and sequence of the tests to be carried out are affected by the fault codes of the selected function if a quick test has been carried out beforehand. The selected symptoms and the integral evaluation logic of eccentric diagnostics also have an influence on the tests to be carried out. Let's take a look at the expert mode now. This provides an overview of all the electrical and electronic components that are involved in a selected function. Whilst, for example, in the control units view, you can only select and open one control unit, in expert mode, you have direct access to all the information on the electrical and electronic components relating to this function. As you already know, the expert mode can only be called up from within the functions view. Try it out. The electric seat adjustment driver function is already selected by way of example. Double click on the highlighted entry. By the way, a quick test is not required for this example. Double-clicking on the desired function or clicking on the Continue button will take you to the function overview. You can only call up the expert mode from here. Now click on the button for the expert mode. You are now in expert mode. From here, you can retrieve all function-related information for the electrical-electronic components involved in the selected function. This is done via the corresponding tabs. You will recognize these from the control units view. The difference here is that in expert mode, all the electrical or electronic components affected are examined, not just one single control unit. When you open Expert Mode, the first tab is active by default. The electrical or electronic components are shown in a listing on the left-hand side. Clicking on a different component will highlight this component, and the corresponding information will be displayed on the right-hand side.
Let's look first at the Fault Codes Events tab. The fault codes are read out automatically when the tab is opened. Then, all those electrical and electronic components with stored fault codes or events are displayed. In this case, it is the Electric Seat Adjustment Driver Control Unit. Here, reading out the fault memory results in one current and stored fault. The Update button is used to read out the fault memory again. This is done, for example, after the function requirements have been created. Clicking on the Tests button will take you to the guided test. You are already familiar with the contents of the other tabs for actual values, actuations, etc. from the Control Units view. So we won't repeat them here. From which screen within the Functions view can you call up the Expert mode? Click on the correct answer. Here's the correct answer. Expert mode can only be called up from the function overview of a previously selected function. How do expert mode and control units view differ? Click on the correct answers, then confirm. Here's the correct answer. In the control units view, only one control unit can be selected and displayed with all its information, whilst in expert mode, all the electrical and electronic components pertaining to a function are shown. In expert mode, therefore, only the function-related actual values of a control unit are displayed, whilst in the control units view, all the actual values are shown. The same applies to the outputs of a control unit.